What is up, ladies and gentlemen? This is the Chig coming at you with another Diablo 4 build guide. Today we're going to be talking about what is quite possibly my favorite build and my favorite item in Diablo 4, and Ariel's Visage. But before we get into the build, let me show you what we can do to Mr. Tormented Duriel. Check out my buff bar down there. Notice anything? Yeah, I don't have any buffs. I'm going to do this without potions just to show you guys what we are working with. It is gonna be good guys it is gonna be good all right let's wait for the fat guy to get out of the ground and let's go you are going to be all kinds of excited when you see what this can do there's a real good chance that we are gonna take him out in one little bit of a takedown here let's see hmm all right, good night, Tormented Duriel. That only took a couple of seconds, guys. What is going on? Let's grab our Reign of Loot, and then I will tell you what we got going on. Let's see if we got anything to be excited about here. And the answer is absolutely we do not. So, all right, let us go back to town, and we will talk about the build. Look how awesome she looks. Oh, yeah. All right. Let's pull this up, starting with the skill tree. We're using Puncture as our main source of lucky hit chance. We need to use a marksman skill for one of our imprints. I will tell you about momentarily. We are using enhanced Puncture, which does not matter. This is going to be giving us back energy that we don't really use. What is most important here? Fundamental Puncture. We are now throwing three blades, each doing 35% damage, which does not matter. This is not our damage. Two blades gives it vulnerable, which is good. However, that gives us three chances at 51% lucky hit chance to do our and Daryl's damage, which is incredible. Down here in the core skill category, we have Flurry. We are not using this for damage. We are using this to proc close quarters combat and to proc our combo point bonus, which is giving us 45% more attack speed. We are hitting some really ridiculous apart attacks per second. This is also spreading our vulnerable from our puncture, which is helpful. We're grabbing Sturdy to get close damage reduction because we are playing melee. Grabbing Siphoning Strikes because our Critical Strikes has a chance to heal us, which is helping us out a lot. Stutter Step. This is a good place to put some of your flex points if you want to move things. Have a little bit of extra movement speed. Never hurt anyone. I'm going to hop down to Shadow Step. This will sometimes proc your Andarials, and I would love to be able to put together a build that has low enough cooldown to just spam this button and do 100s. I think that would be cool. Not going to hold my breath, though. Enhanced Shadow Step. This is just going to give us increased critical strike chance, which is awesome. And then discipline shadow step to give us cooldown on it to get it back quicker. We want to be able to get out of dodge if we get CC. Caltrops. This is just one of our best things in the game. It gives us a multiplier. So our modifiers are they take 10% increased damage from us. Increased by 5% each second up to 64%. This will go up as you put duration on your weapons. So this is always going to go higher and it's amazing. So, you can use Methodical Caltrops if you want the cold damage and the chill, which is the way I prefer to use it. Or if you need a little more crit, uh, crit strike chance, you can use Discipline Caltrops. I put one point into Concussive to get a little more crit strike chance, and then one point into Trick Attacks to knock down dazed enemies, because we daze like crazy. One point into Dash, just to be able to zoom zoom around. We have three points in the Agile to get our dodge chance up. Dodge is really high on Rogue, so that's one of the best ways to not take damage. Just don't get hit. Our biggest defense is Dark Shroud. This is going to make us take less damage as we have more Dark Shrouds. So this is always going to be up because of one of our imprints. I'm going to show you that right after this. We have Enhanced Dark Shroud, 14% chance not to be consumed, and then Subverting Dark Shroud. So I like the movement speed. Again, if your gear is not all the way up um, or you don't have enough crit to keep your Dark Shrouds up, grab Countering Dark Shroud. That way uh, you can be critting more. Our most important things, Exploit 
and malice more damage to vulnerable enemies more damage to healthy and injured enemies you would want to have exploit on your neck malice is a third option exploits the second option we'll talk about the first option in just a second speaking of that first option frigid finesse this is our best stack if you can get this on your necklace get this on your necklace i would have it if i had one all right Deadly Venom, also not bad to get on your neck if you happen to get one. Increased multiplicative poison damage. Debilitating Doxin, just making enemies deal less damage to us. We're using Shadow Imbuement. These three points you can move if you feel like your damage is high enough. Shadow Imbuement, we are using this to give us 12% increased non-physical damage for 8 seconds, which is going to help on our poisons. Down here, I love these points. You can move these if you would like, but I love having these points. So Innervation, we don't care about energy, but Alchemist Fortune, non-physical damage you deal has 15% lucky hit chance. So every time we use an imbued skill, so when our puncture comes out the third time or when we imbue our flurry, we have a 15% increased lucky hit chance, which is amazing. Here are some more flex points. One point into Adrenaline Rush to get us down to haste. While above 50% energy, you get more move speed. I love move speed. I love zooming. And then the thing that brings the build together, close quarters combat. Damaging a close enemy with a marksman or cutthroat skill gains 15% attack speed for 8 seconds. So make sure you're using each every 8 seconds. While both are active, you gain 10% multiplicative of your versus crowd control. As you can see, I have 105% multiply, which means I have 1,050% crowd control damage. So this is amazing. It makes crowd control damage your best stat, and it just, mm, chef's kiss. All right, in the Paragon board, remember, do not blindly follow our Paragon boards. Get the points that you need. We are showing you how to activate glyphs and how to path Basically, to make sure when you get these, you have enough of the stat to get them. That is what this is for. For example, if you do not need the life, you can go a different direction, right? Make sure you are doing what you need to fill in your slots. You can move things around to get more resistances. You can move things around to get more health. You can move things around to do a lot of things. Do what you need, not necessarily what we're doing. Get more health if you need it. Get more resists if you need them all right i'm basically just going to go over the rare nodes and the glyphs so the first glyph we're using here is going to be tracker this is giving us 40 percent more damage because it's making our poison effects last 40 percent longer that is just incredible all right so here we've got max life because it's important it also gives us damage resist all max life because it's important damage and dex incredible second board here Exploit Weakness. This is an amazing one. Get this one early. Use this one often. When you deal damage to a vulnerable enemy, which is all of them because of the way we have the build set up, they start to take increased damage from you until they take 25 multiplicative, which is amazing. Here we have some cold resist and max life, some max life nodes, some damage reduction versus vulnerable enemies because we keep them vulnerable. Like I said, some of these you just need to fill in what you need, right? Here's some more vulnerable damage. That's good. Damage versus injured, good. So, canny. Non-physical damage increases non-physical damage they take by you up to 10%. Multiplicative, this is good. Here, you can get some vulnerable damage. You can get more potion healing. Make sure you're paying attention to what you need, right? If you need more, you need more. Over here, this one, this is the no witness board. As you can see, we do not get no witnesses. This is just a quick way to get over to control. We do increase damage to children, frozen enemies. We see this come up a lot in this build because we chill and freeze a lot. We have some increased damage and damage to crowd control. 8% maximum life. Oh, so good. All right. Now, we're going to move over to the other side where we have Cheap Shot, which is amazing. So, 5% increased damage for each nearby crowd control enemy up to 25%. Multiplicative. We crowd control everything. Get this. It's free damage. Now, damage to crowd control enemies. We have damage crowd control enemies. We have damage reduction from elites. This is incredible, 13%. We have damage reduction from slowed enemies. Also super good. Damage to crowd control enemies. We want to grab that because that is helping us out. Eldritch Bounty. This is probably our biggest DPS increase for one point 
in the whole thing. When you attack with an imbued skill, you gain maximum resistance for it and 20% multiplicative increased damage for that imbuement's element for 9 seconds. We are using the thing that makes Puncture give us a poison imbue. So, every third cast of Puncture, which is all the time, gives us 20% increased multiplicative poison damage, which is incredible. We love this node. All right. We're grabbing Bane because we have a 15% chance to deal double the amount of damage on our poisons over their duration, which is incredible. This is how we're getting those 500 million ticks. Then we have some non-physical damage. We have some potion and max life. As you can see here, I do not have enough intelligence to activate the other section of this. But remember, you don't always want to activate these. Do I need 4% more potion healing? Maybe not. Right? Those are the things you got to pay attention to. Lastly, but not leastly, we are running into the Deadly Ambush board to set up good spot for Ambush. All right, so Ambush, we are dealing more damage to targets increased by our trap skills. Caltrops is a trap skill. We are keeping everything into Caltrops. As you can see, we picked up damage reduction to enemies affected by Caltrops. Easy money, right? So remember, get some of the points you need, right? If there's something else you want, make sure you get it. We are giving you these to show you how to activate them, not necessarily where you need to put every point. All right, let's go over the gear real quick. To the gear! And our massage, absolutely required. Build does not work without it. This does all of our damage, lucky hit, 20% chance, poison enemies in a area around us for 18,380 over five seconds. Incredible. All right, Umbris Aspect. Marksman skills have a chance to give you a Dark Shroud. Our Dark Shroud is our biggest damage reduction. We need this. Get this. My chest, garbage. I hope you get a better one. Get one that doesn't have a GA, that is properly robed, that does not have life per second. Please, please, please. I have not got a better one yet. I need a better one. If you have a better one to give me, please let me know. Um, you want either stun or chance to freeze on this and then you want to roll dodge chance don't break your item trying to get dodge chance if you have one or two rolls left and you get health roll with it don't hurt yourself doing that because then you're going to be sad if you get barrier generation and you don't generate any barrier right so gloves lucky a chance max life i do not think you need dexterity on this piece of gear I had attack speed, but I got above the attack speed cap. You should only have attack speed on one piece of gear once you get that far with your gearing process. So you can put dex here, max life, lucky hit chance. If you need to roll a resist here, roll resist here, you can get your armor here. The big thing here is lucky hit chance. If you need crit chance, you can also get your crit here. All right, we want damage to crowd control enemies here. This is a freezer stun spot as well. So on these four pieces, you want two with stun, two with freeze, all right? So we are using the shared misery imprint on here to just have a chance to spread our crowd control to other enemies. This just makes it easy to blow up packs when running through stuff. I will demonstrate that in a moment. Exceptional leggings of might. I have a resistance roll on here because I needed it. Lucky hits have a chance to freeze. Remember, freeze or stun. So here, you just want this to be defensive. Mine has dex because I did, ran out of gold trying to reroll it. I need to fix it now. So here, just go super defensive on your legs. Uh, fill in what you need. If you need a res, put a res here. If you need armor, put armor here. Obviously, obviously what I would do is armor, life, and something else you need. All right, and all you can also get dodge. On your boots, movement speed, armor, max life. I think that is a great combination. You want to hit with freeze or stun, and then movement speed is your secondary there. Then we are using the concussive strikes imprint. Damaging an enemy has a chance to daze them for two seconds. You deal increased damage to daze enemy, which is incredible. All right, so on your two-handed weapon, your tempers are very important. You need a chance to puncture twice that rolls at least 59%. I will repeat that. You need chance to puncture twice that rolls at least 59%. Reroll the first roll when you are starting to min-max until you hit it with the crit. Then level it up the rest of the way. You need to crit once, 
and level it up all the way to be able to have a 100% chance to cast Puncture twice, which is unbeatable when it comes to this build because throwing two sets of daggers instead of one set of dagger on every skill cast is going to help you out a whole lot. We're gonna roll damage to crowd control enemies. You want damage over time with a high roll or if you get regular damage with a high roll, regular damage is better because it double dips and it's just gonna make everything else do slightly more damage but damage over time is fine if you get a high roll on it. Don't break yourself trying to do that. You want dex and maximum life. On your one-handers, you want one to have couch up duration, one to have couch up size if you're bad like me and you're bad about keeping your enemies in the couch ups. If you are good about keeping your enemies in the couch ups, you can have two daggers with couch up duration, which would be incredible but i am bad at the game i cannot keep them in the caltrips so i like having the extra size here you also want dexterity maximum life and increased damage i have a gg one here i wish this was the one that rolled caltrip duration but it did not oh well all right so on one of them you want poison imbuement on your puncture which just keeps your eldritch bounty proc at all times which is amazing and then on the other, you want Moonrise. Nope, this is Bursting Venoms. This is not Moonrise. I take that back. Bursting Venoms. Chance to make a pull on the ground. This one you can flex in and out. I've been trying this with other things. This is, I mean, it's good, but I'm not real sure it's the best idea because you get two of these every three casts. So... I don't know how much damage this is actually doing. It may be a ton. I haven't tested it a ton. But that's where you have with that. On your rings, lucky hit, max life. One of them you can put crit chance on. One of them you can put attack speed on. Mine has resist all because my resistances need fixed. Um, that's something I've been working on, but that's where I'm at. You want to have agility cooldown and damage to crowd control on both of them. That's just going to help you with your movement abilities, get you around a little quicker. And one of them is going to have the absolute goat, rapid, 30% increased attack speed for your basic attacks, just the best thing ever. And then the other is going to have inner calm. You can also use elements, whichever you want. Um, it's just good. Uh, just extra damage, extra DPS, you're doing good here. Uh, so, like I said, you only need one roll of attack speed. I have my roll of attack speed right here. That's just what I'm doing. It's working out brilliantly. All right, last thing. You want the Noxious Ice imprint on your necklace. Chilled enemies take increased damage. Frozen enemies take increased damage. It's just amazing. We're going to chill enemies more when we poison them and then... Frozen enemies take more damage from our poisons. It is amazing, right? Uh, so damage to crowd control enemies. Then you don't have to put movement speed on yours. I like to zoom. Put movement speed on yours if you want. Use your other thing for temper, whatever you need it to be. Here, my necklace is bad. I have max life, movement speed, lucky hit chance. What you want is exploit, lucky hit chance, and either malice or deadly venoms. You want multipliers. I have not got a good necklace yet. This is what I'm running with. My DPS can go up substantially, but this is what I've got. So this is what I'm using. So that's the gear. That's the build. I will go ahead and show you guys a 99. This is really good for farming. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I will say real quick before I do this, I currently have Dex gems in my gear. I am currently running around with Dex Gems. The reason I'm running around with Dex Gems is because I'm just using this for speed farming right now. My DP, uh, my HP is 29,000. You can get your HP way higher by throwing rubies in your gear. All right, You can do that. If you are too squishy, put rubies in your gear. If you are not too squishy, you can use diamonds. And by diamonds, I mean emeralds because the diamonds are not the thing that give you dexterity. Anyway, I will show you how to play this. You want to zoom around. The cool thing about this build is you can go basically from pack to pack. So first things first, you want to make sure you get some Dark Shroud stacks up. And then you just go ham. You can dot them up. And then after you've got dots on them, you can literally walk away. 
watch my re-progress bar go up as I'm nowhere near those mobs that I was just fighting because we have dotted them to oblivion and we just roll, roll, roll. Make sure you take out the damage reduction bros. They are such a pain in the butt. All right. So that is the only time really that you may not take something out in a full um, set there when they are near one of those guys. You have to take those out before they will start taking all the damage, which is really frustrating. We don't like that at all, but we do like how this build works. So that is a small, small, small price that we are willing to pay to get to run around and dot things up and walk away while they fall over, while we just go through and just rip and pepperoni everything we touch without any effort whatsoever. Um, I get into this weird rhythm where like I attack like three times and then move and then attack three times and then move, which is probably bad because I have that, uh, aspect that when you're standing still you deal more damage so you know this moving around like mad is probably not helping my case any but that's okay so let's go over here let's grab these guys let's dot them up let's walk away now watch they are gonna fall over do you see our progress bar yeah well they just fall over it's amazing this is a super fun build i love poison builds anybody who hangs out with me on any other game knows that i am all about some dots i love affliction warlock i love rupture on rogues i love all of those things um so yeah so get these guys going oh there's a damage reduction bro womp all right got the damage reduction bro Again, all you have to do, dot them up and walk away. If you've got them dotted well, and then you drop your caltrops, they will fall over. Um, there is no doubt about it in my mind. If you dot them up and you drop your caltrops, they will fall over. All right. Uh, da, da, da. Just happening to walk back by those guys because my bar didn't fill up. Womp. All right. Um, I missed a turn in Albuquerque. Let's go back. Do, do, do. Hey, where were these guys at? Okay. Hey, those guys might give it to me. All right. So, you get a little more attack speed and a little more um, lucky hit chance when you have your um, I can't remember the name of the uh, Potion. Uh, the potion that gives you lucky a chance and attack speed. I don't remember what it's called off the top of my head for some reason. I don't know. But it will help you out in here. Um, our boss kill speed is not bad. I am just not playing the best at the moment. So bear with me. Um, you want to make sure you're just keeping your dots rolling. You want to make sure you're keeping them in the cow drops. Wow. All right. So that is the build. That is the run. That is how it works. Let me know if you want to see some other builds. Let me know if you want to see me try Andy's on some other classes. There's a lot of different things I want to try out and a lot of different things that I think might work. And who knows? We will see. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next one.